Good morning. My name is Mark Patrick. I'm the care pastor at Meeting House Church, and we welcome you to this service to honor the memory and to celebrate the life of Catherine Katie Fisher. The family so appreciates your being here today. I remember when my mother died some years ago, even when people walked in the large room, I saw them off in the distance and I realized, oh, she came or oh, he made it. So your presence here is uh, noticed and very much appreciated. There's a reception right after this service at the Edina Country Club. We're all invited to come, so we hope you'll do that. Share the memories that you have uh, with the family and uh, share the tears and the laughter both. Now let us pray. Our Father, creator of all life, giver of every good gift and joy of our hearts. In times like these, we share both tears and laughter. Deep love brings both deep grief and deep joy. Thank you for the memories that each one here has of Katie. And may our time together bring comfort today and courage as we face the future. We're most grateful for your presence here today and the eternal perspective that you bring to us. Amen. I invite you to stand for our hymn. Good morning, and my name is Cynthia, and dear Katie was my cousin. Her mom, Nancy, was my dad's sister. The earliest picture of the two of us, as far as I know, was taken on the day of our baptism at St. Paul's Episcopal Church, Lake of the Isles. The rector at the time, Vernon Johnson, was holding each of us in one of his arms, as babies often are on these occasions, we were dressed quite beautifully, but looked somewhat dismayed and unwilling. Other early pictures of us were taken at Graham and Grandpa Bronson's house. Our families would regularly gather for Sunday afternoon popcorn. The Anderley Sibs 
Sarah, Dave, Katie, Steve, and Jim, and my sisters, Betsy and Nancy. Of course, because there was about a 12-year age range, not all of us were there at the same time. There were any numbers of pictures taken in the Bronsons' wonderful backyard, and one of the things I remember most from their home were the beautiful pieces of white wicker in their front porch. I know there was a meal of some sort at these gatherings, but unfortunately, the only specific item I recall is a rather, rather dreadful lime jello with shredded carrots. <laughs> On the other hand, there were usually lemon squares, grandma's donuts that tasted divine and stuck right here, angel food cakes with hidden dimes wrapped in wax paper for the kids. And if we wanted ice cream, we needed to track down the adult with the strongest arm to be able to get any out of the carton the freezer was so hyperactive. When Katie and I were looking at some of these pictures much later in life, she said, we were always eating. <laughs> and we were. Katie and I were dressed pretty differently for these gatherings. One was dressed in jeans and a shirt, the other a pretty little dress. You can figure out, just watch. I'll never tell. A picture that tickled us was when, for whatever reason, we came in and our clothing were changed about. Perhaps the only time we were dressed the same way was when the two of us were modeling identical poodle skirts. And you have to be of a certain vintage to even know what a poodle skirt is. And of course, there were times when we gathered at the Anderleys' home as well. My parents, sisters, and I lived in Stillwater, so most of the time we would be the ones to go into Minneapolis as we were the outliers. But my grandparents and the Anderleys would also come out to Stillwater for birthdays and the like. Once Katie and I were at Lily Lake, close to my home, and we were sitting close to a couple of guys who I thought were the cream of the crop from my junior high. Katie, however, looked at them and said, you know, I like Minneapolis boys better. <laughs> yes, she did. Katie and I were at the U of M at the same time and would get together from time to time to compare notes, sometimes about a class, most of the time about the fraternity boys we knew. And I remember Katie falling in love and her engagement party. Because I lived away from Minneapolis for 38 years, I'm more than a bit vague of what happened when. I have layers of memories, <clears throat> not an exact chronology by any means. I had to, small, to smile when I saw the picture that was chosen for the front of the bulletin because I don't know when this happened when I was away, but. One year I came back and she was blonde. <laughs> when did this happen? So, <clears throat> I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, I happened, uh, <clears throat> I happened to be speaking with her mother, Nancy, and I said, so, Nancy, do you suppose Katie became a blonde because they have more fun? Nancy, who had quite a droll sense of humor, as many of you may know, looked at me and said, Katie's had enough fun. <laughs> Katie loved hearing that story. After a certain numbers of years, a number of years went by, my father and his wife, Marlis, began hosting Sunday popcorn hours at their home in Woodbury. It was a gathering place where our families could see both change and continuity. The family had certainly expanded. Wonderful sons and spouses and, and so many others. Um, some people were away. Some people had simply died. But our familial connections were still there, strong and loving, and we were interested in each other's lives. And there were even some familiar inanimate objects there, because of inheritance, the same wicker chairs graced the porch, and often lemon squares the table. 
I know I shouldn't make absolute statements, but I don't know that anyone from that crew ever again saw lime jello with shredded carrots. I was very happy Katie had the opportunity to go to France last fall and was able to see our Uncle David's grave at Normandy, again, living the connections. Normally, I don't like typos. Who does, except when they're funny? But yesterday, a typo touched my heart. I was typing out the pastoral prayer, and I thought I'd written, devoted to the community in which she lived. But I typed, devoted to the community in which she loved. That would be any community that Katie lived in, of course, because Katie loved. I did see Katie in the hospital a couple of times and at her home the day she died. And it touched my heart so deeply as it did the heart of others to see her dog Fred there as well. But the memory of Katie that I will, among the many, that the last memory of Katie that I will always cherish is when we went to see Keith Urban at the State Fair last August. This time, instead of pictures, we shared little video bits of the concert. And Katie was so excited, rocking out to Keith with great energy. She was beautiful and vibrant. And I know that we will all remember her that way. I love you, Katie, and I'm so grateful that we shared that moment of joy. I believe that now you are in the arms of a loving God. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for being here. I don't have a lot to say today. My brother is better at this than I. But I know that my mother touched all of you in a special way, and you all know which way that is. She taught me how to be a husband, how to be a father, to follow through with commitment. And one lesson that I always think about often is good things come to those who wait. And oftentimes I would tell her, I don't want to wait. I don't like waiting. <laughs> and she would always say, I know you don't, but trust me. And you know what? She was right. Almost all the great things that's happened in my life took a little longer than I would have liked them to take. So as we look at this beautiful day today that she would have loved, she probably already would have walked at least 20 miles. Uh, we just think about her and that she uh, left this world on her terms. And we should all smile and be thankful we got to experience the time we did with her. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for being here today. It's, I don't know how to start, but um, this was much easier when I was just writing at my computer and posting on Caring Bridge. Now I have to talk to all of you in person. It's just, <laughs> anyway, um, while this isn't what we expected the outcome to be of mom's life or KK as she's known to her grandkids, I just can't say thank you enough to each and every one of you. Um, I can't name them all of you, um, but you know who you are, who has shown up, taken the time to write a card, um, send a text message, meals, you name it. Um, cared for mom at the end to her doctors, nurses. It's, um, the outpouring of love has been tremendous to all of us. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna fit all this in here, but we're gonna try. Um, 
Growing up, mom liked to have a well-run house. Good manners, always encourage us to say please and thank you, and always to look people in the eye. It didn't, I didn't always appreciate that. I generally was like, I don't know, mom, I don't want to do this, and, but I'm glad that it stuck with me. However, she did loosen the rules when mom and dad split up. Pat and I were growing up and becoming more mobile, and I was getting into some sort of mischief. Mom would yell across the room, if you're going to play like that, go outside. <laughs> or, if something breaks, your name is going to be Mud. <laughs> Little did Mom know that the mud would come faster than she could say it. <laughs> My brother and I had a go-kart, and we lived on Sunnyside Road and not the most ideal place to have a go-kart. Um, but what better way than to create a go-kart track in the backyard? Um, I don't know why she was okay with it, but my brother and I would wet down the track and see how muddy we could make it and how much slide we could get in the corners as we raced around trying to beat our last time. It was fun. It was very fun. And I think mom cared more about us having fun than dealing with the pain of our parents splitting up. She always relished in seeing us living life to the fullest, just the way she wanted to live. Another time, which there's two compatriots here that partaked in this uh, antic, is there was an Ace Hardware store down the street from our house. And my brother and I and some friends would frequent it so much. So much so that the gentleman who worked at the counter had mom's number and would call her to let her know that we were okay or whatever. Um, and it just so happened to be right across the street where mom died. Um, it's now a pizza place. But Pat and I would gather up all the loose change in the house and ride our bikes down there with my friends and see how many nails, parts, or other random items we could get with the change we had collected. One day, we decided to buy a bunch of spray paint to spruce up the new stage that my Uncle Steve had installed in our basement. The salesman looked at my brother and said, you aren't going to huff it, are you? <laughs> Confused, we raced back to our bikes paint in hand, and began coating the stage with two of my oldest friends. Let's just say when mom got home, as soon as she arrived from her tennis match, she ordered us outside. Thank God she didn't find us all passed out from the thick haze that had accumulated over our heads. <laughs> Lately, I would often get frustrated in talking on the phone with my mom. She would call to check in and see how you were doing, and I would get halfway through telling her about my day or something that Lindsay and I were up to, and she would say, sounds good, honey, have a good day. <laughs> Wait, I wasn't done. Or did you hear what I said? I started saying to her, I didn't realize I needed to go, or I still have time to talk here. And she would laugh and say, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I've got time. While all this could be frustrating, there were amazing times that you could get one-on-one -on -one with mom and talk about anything. We would take so many road trips as a family growing up out to New York, to Colorado, New Mexico, and all with just mom and my brother and I. And those were some very special times with mom. A year ago, I was able to fly down to Arizona and drive home with her, just me and mom. And we talked about everything under the sun on the way home. In those moments, you could just capture her attention where she was fully there. No distractions, no phone calls, no errands, just mom. And speaking of love, mom was so uniquely gifted in loving well. I'm sure many of you have felt that love at one point. 
Maybe it's because she was born a day after Valentine's Day. One of my earliest memories that's been coming back to my mind recently is when we lived on Sunnyside. My parents were still married. And every morning, my mom would be in her robe and on the chair in her family room, and I would crawl up into her lap between her and the newspaper and snuggle and play with the necklace that Lindsay's wearing today. That feeling of safety, comfort, and love is something we can all hope for in a mother, and I'm so grateful for it. And another memory that's been sticking with me um, is mom's wedding day to Chip. It was just family. We were gathered up at Grandview Lodge, and it was a beautiful summer day. It wasn't, and to be honest, I wasn't totally sold on the whole new stepdad thing. But I saw that mom was so in love with Chip, and it brought her so much joy. And to think that now they are reunited together brings a lot of smiles and good feelings to me. And um, I could still feel, as my brother and I walked her down the aisle, feel the weight of her on our arms. And just knowing that she was just so overcome with joy. She had asked me to help her find a song to walk down the aisle to. And I, I found a song that is titled, My Love for You is Real. And um, I'll end you with the opening stanza of that song. It said, my love for you is real. It moves like a summer breeze. My love for you is strong. Lord, it brings me to my knees. Thank you. A reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. You are my rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Hello, everyone. I'm Jody Anderley, and this is a reading from the Gospel of John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't, know, we don't not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is a blessing called On the Death of the Beloved. Though we need to weep your loss, you dwell in that safe place in our hearts where no storm or night or pain can reach you. Your love was like the dawn, brightening over our lives, awakening beneath the dark a further adventure of color. The sound of your voice found for us a new music that brightened everything. Whatever you enfolded in your gaze quickened in the joy of its being. You place smiles like flowers on the altar of the heart. Your mind always sparkled with wonder at things. Though your days here were brief, your spirit was alive, awake, complete. We look toward each other no longer from the old distance of our names. Now you dwell inside the rhythm of breath, as close to us as we are to ourselves. Though we cannot see you with outward eyes, we know our soul's gaze is upon your face smiling back at us from within everything to which we bring our best refinement. Let us not look for you only in memory where we would grow lonely without you. You would want us to find you in presence, beside us when beauty brightens, when kindness glows, and music echoes eternal tones. When orchids brighten the earth, darkest winter has turned to spring. May this dark grief flower with hope in every heart that loves you. And Katie, may you continue to inspire us to enter each day with a generous heart, to serve the call of courage and love until we see your beautiful face again in that land where there is no more separation, where all tears will be wiped from our mind and where we will never lose you again. Well, good morning. My name is Danielle Jones. I am one of the pastors at Wyzetta Community Church and was also a longtime pastor here at Colonial Church as well. And it truly is my privilege to be here to celebrate Katie's life today. I've never seen such gorgeous flowers of the most beautiful pink. And I hope you notice that Patrick and Charlie's ties match each other and those flowers as only brothers could do in honor of their mom. Well, Cynthia and Pat and Charlie, it has been a privilege for all of us to hear the stories that you have shared this day. 
And I know without a doubt, the stories that you have heard about how Katie lived her life and what she loved and who she was have reminded each of you of the stories that you carry in your heart and hold dearly in the ways that she impacted your life as well. I was honored to meet Katie here in this church years ago when Charlie and I both worked here. She would come by as often as she could when she was in town to support Charlie, and she never wasted a chance to tell me how great Charlie was, as if I didn't already know. As you know, her smile lit up a room wherever she went, so we always knew when she was here, she was a bright light and was so incredibly proud of her boys, always their number one fans, ready to support them however she could. As we hear these beautiful stories, as you have your own, we come to this day and this moment with so many mixed emotions. We certainly are full of gratitude for a life well lived, for the extraordinary times that Katie had with her family, for incredible trips and travels that were some of the high points for her, and of course, the way that she made friends wherever she went. Pat shared with me that they would go to the grocery store a lot of times, and off in the distance, Katie would see someone she knew from a long time ago, and Pat would think, oh no, here we go. <laughs> Most of us tend to go the other way when we see people in that circumstance. Katie went right in to make a connection, to say hello again. She loved people, and it mattered to her to keep those connections. Even as we gather up these beautiful moments, we are full with much sadness as well. For the loss of a mother and a mother-in-law, a grandmother, a sibling, a relative, and a friend. Grief makes us weary because saying goodbye is never easy, particularly when someone, like when we lose Katie the way we lost her when she was living life to the fullest until she had that stroke, and then faced so many challenges during these last few months of her life. It is hard to say goodbye. The passage from the Gospel of John that Jody read a few moments ago is a reminder of what remains when we are in these spaces of deep grief. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me and remember that God is with you now and that I will prepare a place for you. We are so grateful that Katie is in that place now. And we are grateful too that she lived a truly wonderful life. When I asked Charlie and Pat last week to give me their first words that come to mind when they think of their mom, they said joy, fun, adventurous, supportive, driven, a bright light and a ball of energy, walking 20 miles if she would have been here today. Katie was competitive, an athlete who loved to play, who was passionate about coaching, and who also loved watching sports. So without a doubt, she was celebrating when the Hornets took state and ate cake a few times in the last few weeks during the high school hockey tournaments. Katie also loved her friends spending time with them in a multitude of ways and places as often as she could. She was always on the move, whether it be exercising or gardening or working or playing. And of course, she deeply loved her family and moved back here a year ago to be close to them. I was told that one of the pendants that Katie often wore around her neck had the words of St. Joan of Arc engraved on the back and the word said this, I am not afraid, I was born to do this. How fitting for someone who savored the days she was given. So, as we celebrate Katie's gifts, as we give thanks for the love she offered so freely, and as we remember the impact she had on our lives, we are grateful for her, but we are also moved to do the best we can with the lives that we have been given as well. To do good in the world as often as possible. 
to love others intentionally like Katie would have wanted us to do, and to cultivate joy wherever we go. None of our lives will last forever. We each have a limited time to savor the goodness of these days and to love and serve one another as God invites us to do. So as we say goodbye to Katie today, we take comfort that in Christ, death is not the end of the story. In fact, Katie has now found new life. She's whole, she's healed, and she is resting with God. And this truth brings new clarity to the lives that we still have left to live. In the limited days that we each have been given, may we find hope in the God who loves us no matter what, by receiving that love and offering it freely to the world. At the end of the poem that Lindsay just read were the following words, which I think are the perfect blessing to carry with us. Katie, may you continue to inspire us to enter each day with generous hearts, to serve the call of courage and love until we see your face again in that land where there will be no more separation, where all tears will be wiped from our eyes, and where we will never lose you or each other ever again. May we know deep in our souls how loved Katie is by God and how loved we are by God as well, even on a day like today. Let it be so. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh God, you bind us to life by holy and tender ties. We gratefully recall that all our dear Katie was to us, all that she stood for in the world. May we live even more constantly in the companionship of her spirit and carry out in the spheres in which we together moved so much of her purpose as we can. May we be kind to the friends she loved, devoted to the community in which she lived and loved, loyal to the causes which she served. Then in our lives may she still live on to our own comfort and the welfare of your world. Amen. Please stand and let us say in unison the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will.
We give thanks for every one of those gorgeous moments of Katie's life caught on film. And we give thanks for every ordinary moment that was in between. Because that's what life is made up of. Beauty and ordinary things and even terrible things too. And God is with us in it all and that is good news. As we close this service, we are going to commend Katie's life into God's hands. So I invite you to stand now. Let us pray. O God, our strength and our redeemer, giver of life and conqueror of death, we praise you this morning with humble hearts. With faith in your great mercy and wisdom, we entrust Katie into your eternal care. We praise you, O God, for your steadfast love for her, and we thank you, God, for every day of her earthly life. Thank you, too, for all she was and all she is and all she will continue to be in the lives of all who loved her. Thank you, God, that for Katie, death itself is past, that she has entered the home you have prepared for her, and we entrust her now into your merciful care. Receive her into the arms of your love and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, as we close the service now, we will remind you that the family invites you to join them at Edina Country Club immediately following the service. And as we go, may we honor Katie's life and impact on the world by living our own lives to the fullest, in love and in joy and with extraordinarily big smiles too. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit enfold us every step of the way. And all God's people said, amen. Go in peace.